Yo guys, what is up? What's going on? Probably you recognize this car from some of my other videos. It's my friend Carlos's WRX. His engine bay is looking really clean. Did a better job than I did at uh, detailing it here. But he's here in the garage because today we are going to be installing the VIFO A129 Duo. It's a two channel dash cam setup in his WRX. I'll always recommend the VIFO dash cams as a really, really good bang for buck setup. This is the dual channel setup like I mentioned. It's got a Sony sensor, really nice lens on it with a 1.6 aperture. It's got the GPS option, the Bluetooth option, Wi-Fi option, all that good stuff. We're gonna do a quick unboxing of it here and then we're gonna do a hard wire with parking mode install. We picked up the VIFO hard wire kit in his WRX. Let's take a quick look at what's inside the box. It has a rear camera. So that's the rear camera with the IR lights. So you can use this dash cam for if you're an Uber or a taxi driver, or you can also mount it in the rear as a normal rear facing dash cam. And then that is the front. All the wires. It's a really big wire the one that we use to um, route it from the front to the back, mm -hmm. I believe. So we're not actually gonna use all these wires that came with it. The main one that goes from the front to the back, we're gonna need. Instead, we're gonna use the VIFO hard wiring kit with parking mode. You do need this kit to be able to operate the dash camera when the car's off. And you'll also need two fuse taps. Uh, you need to make sure you get the right fuse size for your car, and then of course extra fuses. We're just using five amps for the dash cam. All right, so basically we've got the hardwire kit here, and then coming from the hardwire kit is two wires that we need to look at. The accessory power and the battery power for parking mode. We're gonna connect our two fuse taps. I've got heat shrink there ready. You can either crimp these or you can solder and heat shrink and like, you know, properly do it, but if you're doing the hardwire kit, you probably know how to do both, so it's up to you which one you want to do. So we're down here at the fuse panel and the fuses that we're going to be connecting to is the audio and nav for the uh, accessory fuse. So that's the fuse that powers the camera when the car is on. And then we're going to use the door lock fuse at the top for the battery fuse. That's what is basically going to power the dash cam into parking mode when the car is turned off. And it's going to do um, what it's supposed to do by monitoring the voltage of that battery based on the setting we choose on the hardwire kit. So I think we're probably gonna stick with 12.0 volts. You can go down to 11.8 or up to 12.4. I'm gonna get it wired in. So basically just plug these out of fuses into the fuse spots, take the fuse out, put it into here, and you're good to go. All right, so here is what the fuse panel looks like now that we've plugged in the out of fuses. Uh, the very top, I've connected the battery power connection into the door lock fuse. And then I'm using the audio nav fuse down at the bottom there for the accessory power to the dash cam. Last thing we have to connect down here is the ground wire. It's this black wire here you can see. And we're gonna connect that right in here. Um, on the Subaru, you can see right there, there's a little bolt that's connected to some metal. It's just lit up right now. That's where we're gonna connect the ground to, but based on your car, you'll have to find a spot to ground it. 
If you guys have seen my previous dash cam installs, you know the way I wire things up. Um, pop this side piece off and then I tuck the wiring in underneath this trim piece here, all the way up the pillar and then across the headliner. Alright, so we just basically tucked the wire up this part and then across right here using this tool. And then up at the top here, if you just push, you can stick it into the headliner. So the wire just pops out there and then plugs right into the dash cam on the base plate right behind the mirror. So it actually looks really good. This is the big thick wire that goes from the front to the rear um, and it shows you which end plugs into what. So we're basically just going to plug the front in here into the port that says rear. Same method, tuck this in up top. All right, so basically we, because this wire was so thick, normally I would route it across the top, but it, was, it wasn't fitting that well underneath this piece here. So we went down that pillar, the same way we went up at the other side, down along the bottom trim under this plastic. If you use a trim tool, you can kind of pry it up, wedge it underneath. Went underneath here, up here, up here, going under this pillar, and we're gonna tuck it in up here and the camera's gonna sit right there. So actually, the length is perfect. We're gonna be right on for length. All right, so you can see up there, that is where we mounted the rear camera. Now the car is turned on and the cameras are working. So we're gonna turn it off. Then the camera's actually stayed on recording. So we know that the parking mode works, which is perfect. We are done the installation Overall it took us about an hour to do and Everything's set up and working now. We tested the parking mode and the power mode both work perfectly Just a quick note about the VIFO a129. There's two versions of this Setup one has an infrared camera like this which is dedicated towards rideshare drivers like uber so you can actually mount this camera on the inside facing your cabin so you can film your passengers uh, as well as yourself while you're driving and it has night vision. Uh, for our setup, we mounted it in the rear facing the back as like a normal two channel setup. If you're gonna go that route, I would suggest picking up the non IR version. Um, but if you are a taxi or an Uber driver, you'll want the IR version or you can get that. A lot of people ask me what's like my most recommended camera and the VIFOs are still my most recommended best bang for buck dash cam. Just the value of what you get out of the camera for the cost is still dominating that market in my opinion. If you guys are interested in checking out the VIFO dash cams, I'll have a link down below in the description. And if you have any questions or anything like that, feel free to drop a comment down below and I'll do my best to answer it. As always guys, thanks so much for watching.